seconds to go. Young almost falls down. Throws to the end zone. You only need one hand to count the number of players in NFL history as captivating as Tara Lowens. I love me some me. <laughs> love him or hate him, T.O. was an endlessly entertaining one-man show, a human highlight reel and controversy machine whose resume was as decorated with records and accolades as it was with indiscretions. I took Andy's advice as far as working out. The only thing that seemed to elude him throughout his spectacular, turbulent career was a Super Bowl title. Nevertheless, Owens is still widely regarded as one of the best receivers in the history of the game, and one of the most misunderstood stars of his generation. This is the story behind Tara Lones. Terrell Eldorado Owens was born on December 7, 1973, and raised in Alexander City, Alabama, a small industrial town about 60 miles south of Birmingham. Growing up in the Deep South, Owens and his three siblings were very sheltered by their grandmother, a fiercely protective caregiver who didn't even let them leave the front yard to play with other children. In fact, she only let her grandchildren leave the property for two reasons, to go to church or to go to school. Eventually, however, by the time Owens was attending Benjamin Russell High School, his mother had convinced his grandmother to allow him to play sports. Owens quickly became one of the best athletes in his high school, playing football, baseball, track, and basketball. It wasn't until his junior year when he really began to thrive on the gridiron when a teammate's illness allowed him to crack the starting lineup. Still, with his football career having gotten off to a delayed start, Owens didn't have the numbers or the pedigree as an upperclassman to entice scholarship offers from any big-name collegiate institutions. He also wasn't in love with the idea of pursuing football as a career yet and was actually more passionate about playing basketball. Ultimately, Owens enrolled at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga on a partial scholarship, lured in part because the school's athletic director didn't object to him playing multiple sports. His future, however, was in football. By his senior year, Owens was seen as a legit threat in the Southern Conference, routinely facing double coverages and being limited to just 43 receptions, 667 yards, and one touchdown. He wasn't an elite prospect, and playing for UTC didn't exactly help his draft stock, but Owens still did enough to attract some attention from NFL scouts, who were even more interested after watching Owens transform his body late in his college career. Somehow, the kid who for years wasn't allowed to leave his front yard ended up going in the third round of the 1996 NFL Draft, where he was selected 89th overall by the San Francisco 49ers. Owens, who found himself joining a dynastic franchise two years removed from a Super Bowl title, was particularly excited about the prospect of being mentored by and learning from the player he grew up idolizing. Life comes at you fast, though. Early in the 1997 season, Rice suffered a torn ACL, thrusting the second-year Owens into the starting lineup following a solid but unspectacular rookie campaign. In his idol's absence, Owens shined, finishing with 936 yards and eight touchdowns, helping the Niners to the NFC Championship game. The following year, with Rice back and Owens firmly established as an offensive weapon, the Niners went 12-4 and, and finished third in the NFL in points scored. Owens, for his part, recorded his first 1,000-yard season, notching 67 receptions and 14 receiving touchdowns, tied for second most in the league and five more than Rice. In the wildcard game, the Niners were pit against the Packers in a rematch of the NFC title game the season prior. Owens admittedly struggled, dropping several passes throughout, but with the clock winding down on the last possession of the game, with the Niners down by four, T.O. forever became immortalized in San Francisco. Seconds to go. Young almost falls down. Throws to the end zone. Owens! 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 He caught it! He caught it! He hasn't held on to anything, including his fingers, all day, and he makes the winning touchdown catch somehow, some way. Niners will win it. 
Thanks to Owens' catch, the Niners had finally beat the Packers in the playoffs after losing five straight to the Cheeseheads, including three consecutive playoff games. However, San Francisco came up short that year, and so began the end of a dynasty. The 1999 campaign was a major disappointment for the Niners, derailed by an early season concussion to longtime QB Steve Young, who retired at the season's end. Rice, meanwhile, spent only one more year in San Francisco. As it happens though, in Rice's final game at Candlestick, it was actually Owens who stole the show, hauling in a ridiculous 20 receptions for 283 yards, breaking a 50-year-old record held by Tom Fears in 1950. And that? Owens dominating while his teammates did a whole lot of nothing became the norm in San Francisco for a time, as the floundering Niners won just 10 games combined from 1999 through 2000. For his part, Owens averaged more than 1,100 yards per season while hauling in 17 touchdowns over that two-year span, and in 2000, earned his first of five career first-team All-Pro selections. He was a star, and he knew it. His braggadocious and confident persona, mixed with his unbelievable talent on the field, made him quickly become one of the most talked about players in football. He was also more famously known, and criticized for, his wild and elaborate touchdown celebrations. It's time to dance, just want to dance with you. It's time to dance. Touchdown catch over the shoulder. That stunt actually got him suspended and fined one week's salary by the Niners. And while most loved his charisma and attitude, he also got a lot of heat for quote unquote unsportsmanlike conduct, including one infamous incident with a Sharpie pen. Is that a pen? Yeah. <laughs> After the game, the NFL adopted a new rule nicknamed the Sharpie Rule, which banned players from carrying foreign objects onto the field with them. By the 2001 season, Owens' ostentatious play wasn't merely window dressing for an otherwise forgettable team, as the Niners went 12-4, only to be bested in the wild card by their old nemesis, the Packers. The next year, led by another all-pro season from Owens, the Niners went 10-6 en route to their 17th NFC West title in franchise history. Still, despite having home field advantage in the first round of the playoffs, the Niners looked lost against the New York Giants, who steamrolled San Francisco through the first half of their wildcard showdown 28-14. In the locker room at halftime, however, it was T.O. who lit a fire under his teammates. Some people really took you no know, heart to, to him speaking because it's a guy that never publicly addresses the team. We're going to have to win the game. Let's get our asses up and go, man. We're going to have to win it, man. We're playing too damn left and right, man. I would probably be one of the guys who would normally say something, but this time he kind of took the, took the uh, stance and, and went up there and said something, and it was good to hear from him. In the second half, after going down by another 10 to extend their deficit to 38-14, the Niners erupted for 25 unanswered points, with Owens leading the way. He hauled in two touchdown catches and a pair of two-point conversions to push the Niners to the second largest comeback in playoff history. However, in the next round, the Niners met an all-too-familiar fate when their playoff run was cut short by the soon-to-be Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And for Owens, that signaled it was time for a change. Following the 2003 campaign, it was clear that Owens had had enough in San Francisco, and the frustrated star intended to void the final year of his contract, which he was entitled to do so as long as he did it before the stipulated deadline. But there was a problem. The Niners asserted that Owens' agent had missed the deadline to void the final year of his contract, and therefore had traded him to the Baltimore Ravens for a second round pick in the 2004 draft. However, Owens, thinking he was a free agent, had already reached a contract agreement with the Philadelphia Eagles in hopes of partnering with his friend, quarterback Donovan McNabb. In the end, the Ravens got their second round pick back, the Niners received a conditional fifth round pick and defensive end Brandon Whiting from the Eagles in exchange for the rights to Owens, who would ink a seven year, $49 million contract, including a $10 million signing bonus. But he still had some things to say about his past as a Niner. 
mostly about quarterback Jeff Garcia, who Owen suggested in an interview with Playboy magazine was gay by saying, like my boy tells me, if it looks like a rat and smells like a rat, by golly, it is a rat. Owens quickly developed a rep as a bad teammate, and his time in Philadelphia would only help fan that flame. The 2004 Eagles, led by McNabb and Owens, started on a seven-game winning streak and clinched the division title with five weeks of games left to play. McNabb threw for 31 touchdowns on the season, with Owens catching 14 of them. T.O.'s number 81 jersey became the top-selling merchandise that season. Things were going swimmingly, until this commercial aired before Monday Night Football. Amy! Hey there, Carol. What are you doing here? Oh, my house burned down. And I needed to take a long, hot shower. So where are you off to? Looking so pretty. Baby, it's Monday Night Football. Game starts in 10 minutes. <laughs> you and your little games. I've got a game we can play. Hey, this is Major. We've got Parcells and the Cowboys. And Donovan needs me. Well, what about my needs? What about... Edie? Will you stop it? All of Philadelphia is counting on me. Well, I can't help myself. I love you, T.O. Then how about you tell me what's buried underneath that pool? Oh, you know I can't tell you that. Then I got a game to play. Terrell, wait. Oh, hell. Team's gonna have to win this one without me. Oh, my God. Who watches this trash? Sex, lies, betrayal. And that woman is just so desperate. <laughs> I know what you should watch. Football. It enraged fans, who sent a flood of angry phone calls and letters to ABC, the network that aired the commercial. There was even a formal inquiry by the FCC, and everyone involved had to apologize. Things began to spiral on the field as well, mainly between McNabb and T.O., who had problems sharing the spotlight. Ran that play to a T. Open, wide open, I didn't get the ball. I could hear I could hear my teammates from the sideline throw the why didn't he throw the ball? So I go back to the huddle and I said, dude, I was open. You know what his response was to me was? Shut the F up. Clearly, there was friction between the two Eagles stars. To make matters worse, in a December game versus the Dallas Cowboys, Owen sustained a severely sprained ankle and a fractured fibula, which required surgery, including inserting two screws in his leg. The Eagles announced that Owens would miss the rest of the season, with some speculation that he could return if the team made a Super Bowl run. As fate would have it, they did. The Eagles defeated the Falcons in the NFC title game and headed to Super Bowl 39. Against the advice of doctors who urged Owens not to play, Owens took the field for his first Super Bowl appearance just 50 days after his injury. And although he looked hobbled, he actually had a solid game, recording nine receptions for 122 yards. The Eagles, however, not so much. They lost 24-21 to the New England Patriots, who locked up a second straight title and their third in a four-year span. After the game, Owens was angry, especially towards the media, who criticized him for deciding to play, saying, the media made it a situation to where they thought I was grandstanding. But like I told a lot of people, if it was Brett Favre, they would have called him a warrior. For me, they said I was selfish. That summer, T.O. sought to renegotiate his contract with the Eagles, which didn't place him among the top 10 highest paid wideouts in the league. In his bid for a raise, however, he took a shot at his teammate McNabb by saying, I'm not the one who got tired in the Super Bowl, referring to the infamous moment when McNabb appeared to throw up during the game. Things only got worse from there. He got into a fist fight with a team ambassador in the training room, and in an ESPN interview, he was asked if he believes the Eagles would be undefeated with Brett Favre on the team. To which Owen said, that's a good assessment. I would agree with that. Two days later, he was suspended by the team. Head coach Andy Reid demanded Owens make a public apology to McNabb. Instead, Owens read an apology letter written by his agent that didn't even mention McNabb. It has been brought to my attention that I have offended the organization and my teammates. The next day, Reid increased Owens' suspension to four games and deactivated him for the remainder of the season. 
Owens later held a news conference at his residence where he apologized to the fans, team, and McNabb specifically, asking to be reinstated, but it was too little too late. In March of 2006, the Eagles finally released Owens. Just four days later, he had found a new home with America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. On September 27, 2006, just two weeks into the season, reports came out of Dallas that Owens had tried to commit suicide by intentionally ingesting an overdose of hydrocodone, a pain medication. According to the police report, Owens had said that he was depressed and had said yes when the officers asked if he intended to harm himself. However, Owens later refuted the report of an attempted suicide. I went home yesterday um, after I left the facility and uh, I uh, took a couple pain pills and then I had some treatment. I had a physician over treating my hand and uh, I think after that I was just kind of groggy a little bit and I kind of took some extra pills with my supplements. The, the rumor of me taking 35 pills, I think it's absurd. Following the press conference, the Dallas Police Department reported that the incident had been ruled an accidental overdose. In any event, Owens didn't miss a game, and despite the troubling start, T.O. actually had a lot of success with the Cowboys. In 2007, he set a new career high and tied a franchise record with four touchdown catches in one game. He became the first player in NFL history with at least one touchdown catch and six receptions in seven straight games, making yet again another All-Pro team. And despite sustaining a season-ending ankle injury in Week 16, T.O. still finished the season fifth in receiving yards and finishing third in receiving touchdowns. And most importantly, the Cowboys clinched a playoff spot atop the NFC. Owens returned in time for their first-round matchup against the Giants, but the Cowboys lost. Fans and the media began to put the blame on star QB Tony Romo, but T.O. came to the defense of his teammate. It's not about, you know, Tony. You guys can point the finger at him. You, you can talk about the vacation. And if you do that, it's really unfair. It's really unfair. It's my team. It's my quarterback. And if you guys do that, man, it's unfair. We lost as a team. That offseason, Dallas re-signed T.O. to a four-year extension, but Owens was released in March of 2009. Why? No one knew. Even T.O. expressed shock at the decision. Some pointed to T.O.'s reputation as a locker room cancer as the reasoning, but later on, he told his side of the story. He starts kind of differentiating, kind of just separating, separating. kind of like everything that's like, okay, you know, the Cowboys over here, and then he put T.O. over here. Then he would start, you know, um, he put one line over there and then he started putting like, you know, said Romo, this, that, and the other, T.O. over here. Organization here, T.O. here. Anything positive or, you know, related to the Cowboys, he put on one side and then he basically was like, I'm on, on, this, uh, on this side. You so, on the you by yourself. So then he drew a line down the middle of this and he said, we got to part ways. That's how I got cut. One report suggested Dallas owner Jerry Jones released Owens because he was having trouble selling his new stadium, so he created controversy in order to get the Cowboys back in the news. Whichever side you believe is up to you, but Owens' run in Dallas had ended. After that, he bounced around. A season with the Buffalo Bills where he became the sixth player to reach a thousand receptions in a career. Then after that, he teamed up with Chad Ocho Cinco Johnson on the Cincinnati Bengals for a season, but it didn't amount to much team success, winning just four games. That summer, T.O. suffered a torn ACL that required surgery. He tried to make a comeback and even held a televised workout to showcase himself, but no NFL teams attended. He played for the Allen Wranglers in the Indoor Football League and signed with the Seahawks in 2012 before being released just 20 days later. It was clear that T.O.'s touchdown catching, end zone celebrating days were behind him. All that was left, it seemed, was for him to get his plaque and can. He was, after all, a six-time Pro Bowler who led the league in receiving touchdowns three times. His brilliance earned him a spot on the NFL's 2000s All-Decade team, and he was later inducted to the 49ers Hall of Fame as well. He still is the only player in NFL history to score a touchdown against all 32 teams. Owens, however, was not voted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in his first two years of eligibility, despite being statistically ranked near the top of every receiving category in the history of the NFL. 
Many attributed the delay to his off-field transgressions, but in 2018, T.O. was finally voted into the Hall. In typical T.O. fashion, though, he skipped the official celebration in Canton and instead hosted his own celebration at UTC, becoming the only inductee to skip his induction ceremony. That's T.O., though. He always marched to the beat of his own drum, whether that meant celebrating in the end zone or on the opposing team's logo, whether that meant lambasting his teammates or crying for them post-game. And ultimately, whether he mesmerized you, angered you, made you laugh, or anything in between, one thing is undeniable. There was nobody quite like T.O. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.